Well, hello everyone, and welcome to yet another tutorial from Noseman, yours truly. Because, as we already know, Noseman knows. Um, I'm really hoping everyone said that in tandem anyway. So, today, what I'm going to do is uh, my very good friend uh, Matthew O'Neill. Uh, also known as MASH, also known as 3D Fluff. Um, he did uh, quite recently a really nice video showing how to light up your clones uh, using an effector. So I think the link is somewhere here. Here. Any anyway, it's uh, somewhere around here. Uh, click on it if you haven't seen that tutorial already. And uh, since then, I was asked by a very good friend of mine, an amazing artist, whose name I won't disclose uh, until I get permission to do so, um, about a particular problem, and that is how do we control material aspects of a clone, but more than one of these aspects in the same material. For example, uh, he wanted to use a random effector to control what videos will be playing on uh, each clone. And at the same time, he wanted to be able to control the transparency or opacity, depending on how you view it, of uh, each and every one of the clones with another effector that won't affect the randomization of the videos. And uh, looking into that, um, I couldn't actually find a solution until uh, a good friend and uh, amazing uh, Maxon beta tester, uh, Christian Wolf. Uh, he works for an amazing studio, Pixelusion. Uh, they work in Germany and they use uh, Cinema 4D, <laughs> of course. And uh, yeah, you can check out the um, link uh, in the description below. I I'm trying these things now, they're kind of popular on YouTube. And um, basically, he uh, told me a method. I find that it works wonders. So, without further ado, let's jump into Cinema 4D and a bit of Photoshop and explain what the problem is and how the problem can be solved. So, we have a very typical cloner in uh, grid array mode with 100 clones. And uh, as you all know, the cloner color is transferred from the cloner itself. And uh, what I'm going to do in this case is the following. I want to have randomized colors on these. I want these uh, random colors to be anything I want, movies, shaders, or something like that. So I'm going to use a multi-shader. And at the same time, I want to be able to control the transparency of each clone using a different effector in a totally different configuration. And currently, that's not possible because both the MoGraph color shader and the multi-shader use the same color aspect. And uh, in order to circumvent this limitation, I need to take you for a brief trip into Photoshop land and show you a couple of things. So inside Photoshop, we have a black background and we have a red ellipse, which is set to additive mode, a green and a blue one. And when I activate them, you can see that uh, we can pretty much uh, create uh, any color we want just by blending red, green and blue in additive mode over black. And not only that, if I go to any one of these colors and play around with the red to black ramp, I can actually create different intensities. So basically, just by moving these up and down and blending these three colors together, if I go to each and every one of the RGOB circles and do a tweak, I can represent any color I want within uh, the area that these three circles occupy. And uh, basically, that's how RGB works. It's additive uh, red, green, and blue. And that's over total darkness, which is black. We are going to reverse engineer this and use each and every one of the ramps, red, green, and blue, in a very particular configuration to control up to three different multi-shaders or color shaders uh, for a particular cloner and clones. So let's go back to Cinema 4D and see how this is done. So first of all, uh, let's go to this uh, material and create a multi-shader. And uh, I'm going to click on the multi-shader, and I'm going to add, uh, let's say, five. Uh, go here, let's create a uh, color shader, and let's make this, I don't know, fuchsia. Go here, I'm going to make a copy. You just uh, drag it from the icon on uh, this little arrow, and you don't need to press any shortcuts. So I'm going to do this and this. Make this, I don't know, kind of a dark green. Uh, make this uh, some sort of 
orangey thing uh, let's add a noise here and let's add some sort of a gradient here excellent now I want to add this over here and you will see we see the last of uh, the shaders from the multi shader unless we go to the clone and start playing around with this color and it will change which one we are seeing now in order to uh, work better I'm gonna set the cloner to black so I'm gonna use the Photoshop principle and uh, now our um, canvas is black so I'm gonna add some randomization so I'm gonna go to MoGraph and add a random effector and go to the random effector make sure my min max values in the effector tab are 0 to 100 and turn off the parameters and I'm gonna set this color to on now you're gonna see that we're missing the gradient um, there are all sorts of weird things going on here and there are a couple of things we need to do number one I'm gonna set this to use defined uh, I'm gonna make it white to begin with and turn on use alpha channel strength and this will give us um, a nice distribution I can even go and add this over the background nothing will change now because uh, it's the same thing because this is white and this use alpha strength uh, you only need to use it when you're doing these kind of things with the random and the shader effector now I've read through the cinema 4d documentation but for some reason uh, I don't get it so uh, yes I am very bright but maybe uh, my brightness have um, has overshot my ability to understand simple instructions but anyhow um, yeah please uh, explain if you uh, find out I just click on buttons and whatever works good so we have a random distribution of these uh, shaders here which can be anything if I render this um, this is what we will get fantastic this is the noise by the way okay it's not um, a bug the noise the gradient and the three colors excellent now this uh, random effector what I'm going to do I'm going to assign it to work with the red to black uh, gradient as I did in Photoshop and all I need to do is make sure that this color is not white anymore but it's only 100% red so let me go and zero out the green and blue of course we lose uh, the proper randomization uh, for one reason if you go to the multi shader and click here you will see that we are working with the color brightness and uh, the range of black to white color brightness is different than the one from black to red so all you have to do is set this mode to red and now we should have exactly the same randomization as we had before so what this is doing it's taking the black to red with values from 0 to 255 this is what it's taking from here to here and these values are generated by the random effector and it's mapping those values 0 to 255 because we have the color red set in our multi shader it's only sampling those colors so it's as good as having a black to white gradient and this set to uh, brightness so there you go we have our randomization and it's limited to the red portion of the color of each clone fantastic so now we're going to use the same principle but for another channel so let me bring this up again and we're going to add an alpha channel but this time we're not going to use a multi shader we're going to use a MoGraph color shader excellent and what I'm going to do here and uh, let's make some space here so we can see everything happening at the same time I'm gonna turn on my interactive render region so I can see this grind on up the resolution excellent so now we can see that the same uh, randomness uh, well not the same but some randomness in our uh, alpha channel has appeared but we do not want to control our transparency using randomness we want to control it using a plane effector so select the cloner let's create a plane effector let's call it plane T for transparency and what I'm going to do is tell the plane effector to have no uh, transforms I want this to be user defined green so let's turn this to zero and this to zero and add it just like in Photoshop so now what we're doing we are adding a green color over our red color but the multi shader is only using the red component and the alpha channel should only use the green component but how do we do that because if you click on the color shader we have only color no red green and blue exist here so we're going to do a nice little trick we're going to go here and colorize this so click here with your color shader already in place use a colorizer 
The colorizer offers us two things. Number one, a gradient with a German flag. Colors and an input. I'm going to set this input to the color we need. So the green. So it's going to take the green ramp and it's going to map it to black to white. I apologize to Germany for destroying their flag. So now what we have here is in the alpha channel, we are going to have transparency, which is related to the values that the plane effector is going to provide for us. And I think that if I make this less, it's going to become more and more transparent. Fantastic. So instead of doing that, let's add a fall off. So a linear fall off, let's make this 100%. And now by moving around my plane effector, I'm actually making the clones transparent based on the fall off. And the randomization remains constant because we are not affecting what each and every one of the multi shader shaders does. And that's fantastic because now we even have one more channel to work with. And let's go and add it just for fun. I'm going to add luminance channel. So we're going to light them up using a plane effector. And I'm going to go here and do exactly the same thing. And actually, I don't need to create it. I can go to the alpha channel, copy the shader, go to luminance, paste the shader, click here and leave this as it is for now. Uh, red, green, blue. It's blue's turn. And uh, I'm going to create a new plane effector. Call this plane L. Excellent. And uh, let's go to the parameters, turn everything off, go here, use the find. Let's make it a blue. Let's uh, add it on top. Let's add a linear fall off. Let's make it 100%. And uh, let me make it smaller, actually. Whoops. Make it smaller, rotate it, go here and move it around. And we're lighting up other clones now. So we have different controls for luminance, different controls for color, and different controls for alpha. What else we can do, we can go here and say, I want them to light up as a green color. So just go to the white counterpart and untwirl this and make that green. So now they're going to light up green. I can change the intensity to something like 200% for that knot. And now they're going to light up a lot. And you can see what's going on here. And we have this very flexible way now to control MoGraph materials using a three different effectors. So don't forget to like, subscribe, somewhere down there anyway, like, subscribe, and go check out uh, the 3D fluff, the BroGraph, the X particles, the Cineversity, and all those other fantastic tutorials. Uh, join a community uh, that has uh, Cinema 40 artists in it. And um, don't forget to continue learning. Um, post, uh, share this with uh, as many people as you can. Subscribe to my uh, Twitter feed, uh, which I don't tweet. And if I do, it's uh, probably uh, silly things, but some interesting news um, now and then. And uh, just, um, you know, be cool. Toodaloo.